Good evening. We still have a minute or so, so I'll be back. I'm wondering if it's only started recording. Oh, you're streaming it, it would, right? Good evening, everybody. Welcome Good evening. to. <laughs> yes. Good Welcome evening. To our uh, weekly meditation. Uh, sorry, weekly, uh, three times a week, rather. <laughs> Twice a week. For lots study of session. times a week. All right. Shall we close our eyes and start with an invocation? Inhale and exhale, relax the body. Let's remember why we've all gathered. And let's invoke to the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grandmaster Chokoksu, to Lord Maha Guruji Mailing, to all the great ones, to all the holy masters, holy gurus, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. To all the great teachers, the masters of theosophy, angels and beings of knowledge, light, and power, to our soul and divine self, to all the great beings of communication of the internet and our respective Wi-Fi's. We humbly ask for your great, great blessings, for your divine guidance, for your light, for your love, for your mercy and guidance all through the session. Bless us all with greater understanding, with clearer, with greater clarity, especially with reference to all the new teachings that we will get and to continue to, to enable us to absorb and assimilate this knowledge and use it to become better instruments in your service. We thank you for this great, great opportunity and for your tremendous patience with us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. With gratitude, with deep respect and love, we thank you. Atma Namaste. Welcome again today to uh, the next chapter. We've actually gone to the next chapter. It's not for Lini anymore. <gasps> How sad, are you unhappy about that? Congratulations. <laughs> we should get a cake here. <laughs> Anyways, we'll have a virtual cake in the end of the entire book. <laughs> and definitely. <laughs> I'm just joking. It's wonderful. It's been great uh, fun with all of you joining us. Uh, we can we can cut it energetically. Ah, yes. <laughs> And yes. Physically. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, we are very grateful for that, for this session. 
Oh. Thank you. I thought you meant for the cake. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say so am I. For everything we can say. <laughs> we are having so a lot of enjoyment in uh, this uh, pandemic. We are learning. Uh, we don't have words uh, of gratitude. We don't really. We are so yes. thankful to you. Yes. You are making our pandemic um, memorable. <laughs> Okay. I also agree to it. And, and we look uh, forward to it every day, every week, yeah. uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah, yes. And uh, one more thing I want to uh, add in this both of you, you both are amazing. <laughs> yes. Because we keep laughing. And uh, I wish that we should have this journey uh, till our last breath. We should. Uh, we should be nurturing sessions we can gain so much of knowledge from you because we literally we can sense when you speak uh, Sumi and Amit we it's not you it's just something is coming from master because we were not present uh, when he was alive we can actually sense his energy you know and we are really very thankful wow really blessed yes, to have you both. we were in bliss actually <laughs> Especially during these classes uh, not only knowledge, actually bliss and sometimes happiness, sometimes joke. Everything we are enjoying. You both, uh, oh, no, you all both the together actually uh, package, complete package. <laughs> Double dhamaka. Thank, Thank you. Actually, you know, I didn't wish to wish this, um, I didn't no, wish to miss this session. I just traveled from Nasik. I have just reached to my home. Oh my I said, no, I just have to attend this session. Then uh, I will do the rest of the things. That's it. Thank you, Anya. So, uh, without... Uh, one more thing, just a moment. Yeah. Uh, actually, this is a thick double book, the astral book, and one more, like, I don't know, I have purchased almost three years back. And I could not open it. But only because of you, I have completed uh, yeah, Theosophy. Yes, yeah, the three books I had bought almost three years back and I haven't started with any of them. But with your lessons and all, yes, definitely I have. I'm going to finish the second one. I'm so happy. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think you're ahead of me. I think after, uh, I think I picked up my books in the 90s and I haven't finished all of them completely either. Yeah, you're so very old. Fresh. Yeah. I'm still using the... We all finish it together. We do his book study one yeah otherwise it wouldn't be possible on without the lockdown because um, three times a week to get Sumi and me together would be a miracle yes even yes. our son doesn't get us together dynamic duo in one frame <laughs> dynamic duo in one frame yes very nice yeah, we are fortunate Thank you, everyone. We are blessed. We are really blessed. Thank you so much. So now we'll go to the atomic web. Yeah, so we're going to mute everybody. Okay, here we go. Muting everyone. So let's move on to our next chapter. So it's called the atomic web. The web is something uh, pranic healers, especially those of you who have finished with pranic psychotherapy, are very familiar with, yeah? And so it starts off here by saying, since we've been talking about um, the etheric body and the astral body, with reference to these two bodies, they come to this particular aspect. So they said that we have already seen that there's a very close relationship between the etheric and the astral body or the etheric double. Now, between these two, a set of centers, right? Remember we said there is a corresponding, whether it's uh, the throat or whether it's the agnya. If there is one in the etheric body, there is also a corresponding one in the astral body. Uh, of course, the, in the astral body, it's not exactly in the same position as it is in the physical. However, between these two sets of centers, there is what you call an interpenetrating these two. Uh, there is something that they call a web or a sheep. They say that this is a single layer of atoms that are closely knit together, right? Literally woven together. 
and uh, when and much compressed and permeated with a special variety of prana. And so this 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 prana that they're talking about that comes into this web, they mention again later. So again, it is between these two bodies, there's this very, very thin layer, specifically with reference to the centers. We are not talking about the whole body, yeah? So they're saying in connection between the chakrams, so only with reference to the energy centers, there is this seep or web or this layer. And to repeat myself, uh, this single layer of physical atom, closely woven, much compressed, and permeated with a special variety of prana. So that's how they start. And then they say the prana, which normally this prana that we're talking about comes only from the astral into the physical. So the, it is only a one way movement of prana coming from the astral and moving into and towards the physical. And the, the atomic shield, as they call it, we're just gonna call it web to make it very simple. So this web will not allow anything else to pass through it in the opposite direction. Yes, so only from the astral, it allows this so-called energy or prana to come out towards the physical. However, it says an absolute barrier to all other forces which cannot use the atomic matter of both planes, which means the etheric plane and the astral plane. They say that the shield is thus a protection that is provided naturally by God in, in our system. And the reason why it's there, they say this is to prevent premature opening of communication between the astral body and, and towards the physical body or the physical plane. The reason being that uh, if you allow this communication, this web to be open, the amount of astral experiences that might come through and flow into the consciousness of the human brain might overwhelm the person, yes, overwhelm the human being. And uh, they say that they could be causing harm in the process. Now, so, uh, so to go back to what they've written here, they say the sheet the shield, sorry, is thus a protection provided by nature to prevent premature opening of communication between the astral and the physical plane. Were it not for this wise provision, all kinds of astral experiences, good and bad, would pour into the physical consciousness, where in case of most men, they could be productive of nothing but harm, where it's causing harm. And they say, at any moment, an astral entity, if that was the case, an entity, we are, we're not talking about an astral body, we're talking about actually an astral entity, uh, could introduce force. That force would be too much for an ordinary man to handle. And so if that force comes in, the, the ordinary human being is not prepared to handle this kind of load or force or energy. And then most of them, they say a little later, can even go a little crazy. And so say, those, they say, sorry, a man would be liable to obsession by an astral entity who desired to seize his vehicle. So if they know that this person has opened, you know, if you can call these webs gates, then they can easily start to use your physical form. And that is not conducive for the health of any person, you or me. And so um, that's where I think I'll stop. Do you want to continue, Amit, at this point, or do you want me to continue a little bit more? Hmm. We need to. Okay. All right. Um, you want to explain anything about what you said or no? That's it. I, I, I had a few more things for some reason I can't remember. I'll, I'll come Even to I can't remember. <laughs> I had a lot of things. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we have already seen that there is a very close connection between the chakrams. I like this word chakrams. It sounds tasty. Okay. Anyway, in the astral body and those in the etheric double. Very close connections. So again, it's hinting at the principle of correspondence. Okay. Um, now, between these two sets of centers, but there are two sets of them, and interpenetrating them in a manner not easy to describe, there is a web of sheet composed of a single layer of, okay, whatever this closely woven, much compressed and permeated with a special variety of prana. Uh, 
I think all of you who have done pranic psychotherapy have understood that this is the 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 etheric web, the chakral web, right? Right. So um, so what they're trying to say is one thing that's very very uh, important to understand. Let's look at the let's look at the pictures and then I'll explain. And what else does it say? Now, by the way, what type of prana we do not know that it's made of? It's made of a vital vital force, right? Right. Prana from the astral. No, no, no. It says permeated with special variety of prana first. Uh, so there's a type of prana plus vital force. Vital force is usually soul energy. Vital force, according to theosophy, is something that animates or gives life, right? That's why it's vital to the existence. I remember reading vital force. I heard you say it. Ah, it says in the image. Okay, so we'll just go to the... <laughs> okay, image. One second, I can share, right? So Sometimes you have to look at the picture also. So, shield is permitted by a special form of vital force. And over here, it says a special variety of prana. Now, prana and vital force are two different things, right? So, whereas prana could be anything like chi, you know, there are so many types of chi. There's tree chi, there's brown chi, there's air chi, solar chi, hachi. That's a bad joke. Hachu. Anyway, so there is. It's always uh, Chinese, it's Japanese anime. No, 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 that's key. Anyway, but. Um, Sounds like some of those characters. The Japanese anime is pretty fun. You know, when they get angry and stuff like that, or they're upset, oh their health rays all become squiggly. They're like, uh, and you know, you can see the health rays drooping and getting all squiggly and stuff like that. Anyway. <laughs> Um, you don't have to watch it because he said it. Pretty good. Uh, but compressed and permeated with a special variety of prana. So it's actually vital force, right? According to the diagram. All right. So normal life force passes through easily through the shield. And um, okay. So the prana, which normally comes from the astral physical, can easily pass through. But the latter is an absolute bar barrier to all other forces which cannot use the atomic matter of both planes. What does that mean? Does that mean it's negative? Or, so what that means, okay, we can't, maybe not on the higher level, but on one level of truth, it means the web has consciousness. If you have to allow some things in and not some things out, you have to have a certain amount of consciousness, right? You have to have a certain degree of consciousness, right? Just like a crystal has some consciousness and energy can be programmed. Now the question is, who is programming this energy? Can energy be programmed in psyche cell defense? Yes, we can. We're using a computer. What is a computer? What, is a, what are programs in a computer language? Programming is telling the energy what to do, <laughs> right? So it can be programmed. So the programming is that it will allow uh, what prana, which normally comes in from the astral into the physical, in, is such that it can pass with perfect ease through the atomic, through the web, uh, but the latter, what is the latter? The shield will not allow. Is an else. absolute barrier to all other forces which cannot use the atomic matter on both planes. What do you think that means? To use the atomic matter on both planes. I cannot just do it clever. Anyway, so now the question is what type of prana well, is vital force? What type of vital force? Is it a mixture of two, three forces? We don't know, but we can speculate, okay? Based on the properties, we can speculate, which we will do towards the end of the chapter. When does it come into the body? Who knows? Is it made with the same time as a chakra? Like for example, does a baby have a chakra web? Is that, or maybe at the age of five, 10? We do not know. I've not observed. I should have observed. Should have done that. It's too, it's too late. It started seven. Seven. See if they have chakra webs. So who knows? Because maybe that's why they're so impressionable, right? They say they are. What does the psychologist say? They are well, like a sponge. Like a sponge or carbon. Yeah, they copy. You know, sometimes you hear something. The baby just say it. You're like, ah, don't say that. Of all the words you had to remember, you had to remember that word. <laughs> so, um, so maybe we do not know when it is uh, there, but it's good to keep in mind. So when you read something else, you know, sometimes it's good part of study is knowing what you know and knowing what you don't know, but leaving it there, you know, so that when you read something, you're looking for it some subconsciously. So when you find it, it'll register. Okay. Um, 
And the shield is thus a protection provided by nature to prevent premature opening up, blah, blah, blah. That's what Sumi said. Um, the book said. The book I just said. Read it. Yeah, she read it and she spoke about it. Now, the question is why? Why? What's wrong with the premature opening? Why aren't we all born clairvoyant? What's the problem? True. You have to ask why, right? So we know what it is um, and we know how it allows it, right? And we want to ask why is the physical consciousness of most men at that time, it would be harmful. Why? So one answer would be because their chakras for most people are not transformed. They're not transformed. Most of the lower chakras are not transformed, right? So there's a tendency, and since most of them are solar plexus oriented, they start to look like Sumi was explaining uh, in the previous session, uh, they start to look through uh, not the one they're supposed to, like the upper chakras, but they start to look through the solar plexus, sometimes through the lower chakras. Right? You have to understand, remember, you have to connect this to what we spoke about in the clairvoyance and clairaudience part, where the particles you don't see from your eye, you see uh, from the particles passing through a certain chakra. And whichever chakra that passes through, you'll sense on that vibration of frequency. Do you remember that? How, uh, so you're not seeing only with your eyes, you're seeing front, up, down, back, this, that. So now, if it's not passing through, say, the Agnya, which is a higher chakra to do with the high, higher soul, which we, I think we discussed that, right? The Dat and all that stuff. Look, you cannot forget what we learned in the past, yeah? Because if you forget everything, then it's, I can't do anything about it, right? You have to recall, okay? So we, when, you, when you think of that, then you realize that what if this is this big? And what if this is this big? The astral, and, and this is the most used for a person emotional. Uh, when a person is emotional, they're using this. They're not using this. They're not using this. So what would the, what, where would the astral particles be passing through? Here. So they would actually see. That is what it means to see through the solar plexus. You're not really, there's not an eye opening there and you see through the solar plexus. The particles pass through that. You sense everything, but on the frequency of the solar and not the higher frequency of the solar, the lower frequency, and the solar is not clean. Am I confusing you? I think it's too much information. It's no, it's much? okay. It's okay. So um, that is why it's dangerous, all right? Now, if you do that, what is the next part? Um, you didn't go there, right? I went to the next part. You went to the... A man would be liable to obsession by any astral entity. So like attracts like. So when you start to react that way, you start to see... Uh, beings of that negative frequency of the solar. <laughs> Are you okay? Right? So you start to see these beings and you start to think that these are beings and you have to connect it to the pranksters part that we showed uh, the court and all that. Okay. Now connecting it to the presentation. What is this? Showing something. Yeah. So this is a um, single layer of physical atoms. You see, it's physical atoms permeated with vital force. And, uh, and, and one more thing. Uh, so it's astral, uh, yeah. So anyway. And the life force going. Yeah, I think that's much. Now, this is where the, uh, the, the, the difference is. Here at the page end of 63, it says interpenetrating them in a matter not easy to describe. Uh, I don't know why it is not easy to describe, which is why we will not describe it. Um, you know, I think, Amit, even if you were clairvoyant, uh, to distinguish between the astral body and the energy body might have been difficult in those days. It's very difficult because people are very, very... Uh, so, so maybe that's why they're saying it's very difficult to separate them. But the image from Master Cho's book makes it very, very that's easy. Because that's the difference when you have um, the teacher's blessing. Now, you see, it's called a sheet. The word sheet is to protect, right? To, uh, like a cover. You're right? You, it's like a sheet for a sword or something. Now, here it says interpenetrating. In Master's book, it says located at the back of the chakra, near the surface of the body. So he's giving the pinpoint location, right? At the back of the chakra, near the surface of the body, is an energy web. 
It's slightly smaller than the chakra, about one inch in diameter. The web is called protective web because it acts as a filter to protect the person from negative external influences. I'll just go to the next paragraph. So that's what the uh, next paragraph will talk about. Okay, now the question is, is it at the back or is it at the, is it interpenetrating? And here you have to understand there are different levels of truth. They're both correct, all right? Because um, I've heard Master Choa, although this is in the book, I've heard Master Choa personally on two instances explaining the protective web and two instances he said it, the, inter, uh, the, the chakra web interpenetrates the chakra. And for a long time, I was confused because one time or twice, I'd sensed the protective web initially. And for me, it looked like uh, there was another chakra. You know, it's like uh, almost, you see, quarter of an inch and then another one there, almost occupying the same space, but not really. And there's like a fisherman's net. You know, the image that came to me, I don't know my, why my brain processed it that way. It's like a fisherman's net thrown across it and looped and it knotted at the back, okay? So, and that was uh, woven, you know, like a fisherman's net. It, it's weave, uh, woven together and it moves there and it, it's, uh, it's ending over there. It doesn't end into the stem. It doesn't go into the stem. Why? Because in case someone comes in, you don't want it to go directly into the main channel, <laughs> all right? So whether that is true or not true, I don't know. Now let's look at this. If you look at this picture, this picture is uh, from the chakras book. So it shows you the protective web, but it's not showing the process of interpenetration. It's just showing it at the back. Um, now, here, it is not at the surface of the body. So this is extremely confusing. So this is the danger when you have 2D diagrams. And this is the danger of the limitation of description. <laughs> because even in the book, it's almost like it's not near the surface of the body. It's almost like it's almost next to the Shushumna Nadi. Do you get it? Can you see? It's like there. It's right next to the Shushumna Nadi. So that means, it, is it inside the body? Then you look for clarification. You look at the psychotherapy book from, uh, this is when you zoom in, right? But when you zoom out and you look at it, the actual way, it's like this. Is that okay? So, and we know that the chakras are uh, a quarter of an inch in front of the body or the etheric, the, the etheric double is quarter of an inch end uh, outside the body. So the chakra web is in front of it. If the chakra web was behind it, there would be no point because there would be no protection. <laughs> Do you get it? You have to have the filter in front. Okay. What else? Okay, we'll look at that later. I hope uh, this is not confusing. Okay, let's move ahead. That was... All right. I'll summarize it later. Yeah, we'll come to that a little later. Sorry, I'll try. The atomic shield. Yeah. So then we move on uh, further with this web. So they say that this web provides a safeguard for you and I on a regular basis, away from all these undesirable happenings that do occur. On a normal level, if you look at it, they say that it prevents us from even recollecting what happened during our sleep cycle or our sleep state. So even that is kind of, un we are unconscious of it because of this web. And they say it does not allow whatever you experience during sleep to go towards the physical brain. And so there, there is no consciousness of uh, what occurred at night. Now they say this is also reason why uh, when a person leaves their body completely, that's on uh, at the time of death, momentarily they do become unconscious. Coming back uh, to this regular thing that we do every night, occasionally, right? Occasionally, that means quite, not, not very often, right? So occasionally when this astral body, which it does on a regular basis. So when you are sleeping, right? The physical body needs time to rest. This physical body of ours, cannot sustain itself working 24 seven every day. Maybe when you were in your teens, maybe in your twenties, if you're lucky, but in your thirties, maybe a day. In your forties, maybe <laughs> half the night. In your fifties, probably not even <laughs> that long, right? And so you realize the body needs to rest, whether it's that six hours, whether it's eight hours that you require, it doesn't matter. 
the body needs that time because during that time of sleep, it tends to repair itself. It tends to energize itself, recoup itself so that the next day morning you have enough, yes, energy in the energy body to continue with the rest of the day. Now, when you're younger, the kind of, remember we were talking about people who have this energy that comes through the spleen, goes through the entire body, and then they still have that surplus of pink prana. They, that is when people are very, very young. Yes. Now this doesn't happen the same way. The assimilation of even prana doesn't happen the same way as we grow older. And so the body does need to heal. Yes. On a regular basis. Yes. And so we need to rest this body. If you don't give this body rest, there are times when you say you're going to push yourself, you know, maybe it's your kid's examination. It's, it's some deadline and you're trying not to do it um, and, and not to sleep for like two or three days. But you realize the third day you say, okay, I'm just going to sit down for a few minutes. I'm just going to put my head down for 10 minutes. And that's it. <laughs> we will not get to see you till the next morning <laughs> because the body says, forget it, buddy. I'm not waking up. You know what you want. I need to recoup. And, but the soul, right? The Jivatma that is the one that occupies this body says, listen, I can't wait for you for eight and seven hours. And so every night it moves into the astral body, right? And so it moves into the astral body and then moves in the astral world or the inner world, has its experience and in the morning comes back. Now the ability for our body, this physical body, this brain to be conscious of what we actually actually happened in the astral travel is not always something we register. And so they say one of the reasons is because when it comes back, yes, the astral body comes back very rarely or occasionally, let's put it that way. That sounds a little more positive. Occasionally there is success. Yes. There is success when the astral body comes back to leave some impression through the etheric body into the physical body. Yeah. Through that impression on the etheric and the dense body of the physical body. So that in the latter part, when we're just about to wake up, we have this very vivid memory. Oh, you know, I had this amazing dream. Um, I saw the, this beautiful scenery and I was floating or I saw Master Choa and I was sitting in a class. You suddenly have that memory, which is very, very clear. Not just uh, with sleep, actually. This also happens in your meditation. And so when you come back again, when you're seated and you come back from your astral experience back when you're seated, again, you realize, hey, I have this amazing memory of what actually occurred in the last five minutes or, or more or whatever. Now, the problem with this memory, Master Chow would tell us, he says, if you have an experience when you finish with your meditation, please write it down immediately. Because the longer you wait, it starts to slowly disappear. Right. The, the, uh, what do I call the specifications of that dream? The details of the dream suddenly start disappearing. So if you had a meditation that was really good last week and I ask you, what was it? You'll say, you know, I'm not too sure. I can't remember very clearly, but it's something like this. And the reason they say for something like that to happen, uh, they say that at that point, it's a very, very vivid memory, but this quickly starts to vanish. Why? Because they say that as we make an effort to try and remember, the physical brain vibration overpowers the most subtle astral vibrations. And so it slowly starts to disappear. And if the dream, even if it was sleep, um, if there was some message for you, you need to write it down early in the morning. If you finish with your meditation and you had a wonderful meditation, when you come back, keep, an ast keep a spiritual journal or a spiritual diary to write it down. You know, when I was much younger, uh, when I would do these meditations with Master Chua, I'm talking about in the <clears throat> early, early two decades ago, I would see this place with a lot of temples. I would see um, really ancient temples, you know, they literally look dark brown, uh, like the ones, and I've never seen, I haven't really traveled that much at that point, uh, just a couple of uh, school excursions, and I definitely didn't see something like that. And I used to wonder why I kept seeing it. And then I'll see this whole temple with all its pillars going right through. And I would wonder, I said, you know, I'm not even from that background. How come I'm seeing temples? It was very strange for me. And so I would write down details. I would sometimes sketch it out, uh, you know, so I have a memory of it. And it was only much later when Master Chua started to teach other courses, I understood what that meant. Yes. So sometimes your dreams, um, your experiences, your spiritual experiences may not make sense to you at that point because it, it may not be relevant. The images may not make sense. The colors may not make sense. The people you see may not make sense, but just write it down 
And you'd be surprised later on, especially when it, it, in my case, you know, those, those images of the temples kept coming over and over again, different, different types of uh, images of temples. It was only much later it made sense to me. So whatever does come, if it is vivid, try and write it down. Yes, that's the only way you'll be able to sustain that, uh, the details of that experience. Yeah? So what she said. <laughs> and also, by the way, there's another reason why it can be harmful uh, if, you, uh, if you're not used to it and you start to, uh, you know, whatever they said, what it, uh, it, uh, it might pour into physical astral experiences, pour into physical consciousness, where in the case of more men, in most men, they would be pro not, not productive, but harmful. There's another reason. Uh, I'll show you the quote by mistake. I put it towards the end of the uh, presentation, but we can, we can revisit it. You have to understand this web. It not only, um, although it allows even the vibrations to come through, it um, it 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 muffles your uh, emotions, right? Because this web might protect you from external ones, but uh, you have generated your own emotions, negative emotions. You experience anger, stress, fear. When you experience that, this web will muffle because there is a you see there is a barrier between the uh, astral and the uh, etheric. So there, they, it, it will start to muffle it. So what you feel as anger is actually muffled anger. <laughs> All right. Now, if you actually did not have that web, that anger would feel extremely, extremely intense, extremely, extremely intense because it has to pass through in through the web, into your etheric, into your brain and experiences emotion through the nervous system. Remember, but now if you bypass all of that and you are in the dream world, Right. That's why they say you can have intense ex uh, experiences or even tantric. Uh, you know, the word tantric is misused. It, what did it? What was it meaning? Remember, we read about it. I think yeah. it's got to do usually with just sex. They just no, no, no. They, they, because that's the most selling part of tantric. Right. right? Tantric means the basically energy. empowering or something like that. The truth or something like that. Anyway, but of course, sex sells. So that's I think what it's I got to do with how you channelize energy. something like that but one of the energies is that so that's, why, that's the only thing that they emphasize so, on. so that's why they say you know purgatory is so painful you don't have a physical body your whole etheric your astral body is experiencing the emotion without the buffer of your physical body and your physical etheric chakras it's so it's very intense very intense all right now uh, so now why uh, should you not be able to see and feel these energies look think of it what, what sumi was talking about these temples and all it's nothing, uh, it's just another world interpenetrating this world. You know, just like in an ocean, you have not one creature, you have an entire world in, the, in an ocean. You know, you have in, so many creatures, uh, animals, plants, you have an entire thing there. It's a separate world from the physical world. You have a separate kingdom there. I mean, if you go into the ocean, it's completely different, right? So it's something like that. You know, Aquaman. There, there are Aquaman, right? So there are different uh, creatures and different things. And it's interesting. Um, and also, now, um, now about this whole waking up and all that. Now, what Sumi said, when you write it down, uh, one thing that uh, additionally you can say is it trains the brain to register the experience. Okay? It trains the brain to register the experience so that the next time your brain, it, it's like there's a bridge, right? So it's training the bridge between the astral and the etheric to register this uh, on a more uh, physical level, on a more mental level, so you can really understand what's happening in the inner world. Okay, so, uh, but initially in most people, it's not really uh, trained yet. Uh, number one, it's not trained. Number two, the web is a little bit too thick. Um, now the question is, as you write it down, right, as you write it down, you tend not to forget. And as you write it down, according to Master Choa, your brain can remember more and more, all right, experiences. Now the question is, what is happening to the web while you keep writing it down, right? Something must be happening to the web because now it is allowing you to register more and more, right? So you are actually changing the composition of the web. And that is the principle behind clairvoyance and uh, the, all the clair stuff, <laughs> right? You change the composition of the web. You change the, uh, 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 the, the structural uh, 
thing of the web. <laughs> so, it's just a program of the pro, web. Not the pro, yeah, even the, even the, uh, the way it's, uh, you change the structure. We, we, maybe we'll talk about it in the next session. Okay, um, now, uh, the dreams, the dreams, I was actually thinking about it. Something came to me and then it went away. Um, but the dreams is basically, uh, and also the death was there, right? Something about that. So unconsciousness. I don't know. Maybe when you die and you come back, you expect the person to remember where he went, <laughs> right? So some do, some don't do. Uh, some don't know. They don't, it's just blank. So, oh, you know, where do you go? And how come you don't remember, right? Uh, if, you're, if your soul is supposed to go there, you have consciousness. How come you don't remember when you come back, right? So it's just like a meditation. Your brain cannot, the, the web, uh, you see, when you say to remember, that is a certain form of energy. Maybe the web will allow it to, maybe the web will not allow it to. Is that okay? Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Because we cannot go too much in detail about this because it's just educational purpose. There's no practical purpose. It's just good information to have. Um, now, and one of the practical aspects, why, why, would, why would nature create us this way? Because it, unless you're very developed, if you're sleeping, uh, and this happens to very often to meditators as well, right? Who have spiritual experiences. They lose track of reality. Have you noticed that? They lose track of reality. They, 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 they're like, I don't care anymore. I don't want to work. If you're always in the dream world and you remember everything and you remember everything like physical, you will not be able to distinguish what is a dream and what is reality tomorrow. <laughs> right? If you're a normal person, if you have not been... Uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, if it's not been normally, you know, gradually, it's like taking a person from the 1500s, like you've seen those movies, and throwing them in 2020. <laughs> so the, uh, the exposure is just too intense, right? It has to be gradual, right? So um, that is why even uh, St. Paul, if you read the Achieving Oneness book, there's a passage in the Corinthians about St. Paul says, I met a man in Christ who's in third heaven, uh, and uh, whether he was... Uh, in the body, out of the body, I do not know, God knows. And whether uh, I was in the body uh, or here, out of the body, no, whether I was in the body, whether in the body, out of the body, I do not know, God knows. When he says a man in Christ, a man in Christ, you have to understand the crown chakra is called a Christ center or Christ consciousness in the Catholic uh, faith, right? So basically a man in Christ is a person who's a holy man because his Christ center is highly, highly activated. So he is in Christ. Okay, and um, uh, he met this person in the third layer. Now remember, there are different layers of the inner world. Each school has different uh, ways of categorizing it, so we do not know, but somewhere in the inner world, whether he was in the body or out of the body, he does not know, God knows, right? So the experience was so vivid for St. Paul, he did not know whether he actually met that person physically or whether he met him while he was sleeping in the inner world. Do you understand? So can you imagine, it, it was so vivid for him. And then he met this other person who was also, uh, and he says something, something, something. And I, I, when I met that person, um, you know, when I met that person, uh, whether he was in the body, I don't know, God knows, blah, blah, blah. So he's trying to say that I met that guy. I'm not sure whether even he was actually physically there in front of me or whether it was his, uh, you know, <laughs> astral form or other form, you know? So. Who knows? So, so it, that's, why the, that's why we talk about in the Achieving Oneness class as connection through uh, movement in the astral world or leaving your body. So, uh, so that is why. Now, if it was seen, now, if it's not St. Paul, it's someone else. Can you imagine how confusing it would be for a person? Like, Sumi, did we talk yesterday about this? No, I mean, we did not talk about this. Yes, I'm sure we talked about it. You signed the deal. <laughs> you paid me one million. <laughs> Right? Or I don't know. So this is this is what I understand from this because I'll just take it from you and give back to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So when we're talking about memory, another thing that Master Cho would tell us to do, uh, if you remember, uh, even now when you go for get togethers, we always ask you to talk about your experience after meditation because it's not just your own memory of uh, or recollection of what occurred, but also as you listen to others, you suddenly realize, oh my God, yeah, even I saw something like that. Or, you know, this also happens. It's like a you. trigger, you know? Correct. And so then that, that web kind of allows more of that information to flow through. And so that's, that was one thing. The other is uh, for this memory to continue to help and for registration uh, to occur is the Kundalini. 
the Kundalini has to go up to the brain to allow the brain to upgrade itself so that whatever you experience, when it does come ultimately into the physical level, into the dense body, it can be registered. Yes. Uh, someone had asked, uh, now when we're talking about leaving, it's not the etheric body that leaves. It's the, ast you go in the astral body. The etheric and the physical body are asleep. Yes. So you move into your astral and come back. How do you know it's the same body and you don't go to somebody else's body? Because there is a link. Yes. There's an energetic link between uh, you and that. And also not all the energy from your soul has completely gone away from your physical When, when she's saying you, it's talking about the soul energy because the soul energy interpenetrates all the vehicles. Correct. So it's like, um, it's like your consciousness, most of your soul consciousness, actually it starts from what we call the 12th chakra and it, you always remember the higher principle encompasses the lower. We, I think we spoke about this in the first chapter. So it interpenetrates um, the mental, the uh, um, the emotional, astral. The, um, the astral, the uh, etheric, etheric and the physical. So now how it interpenetrates, that is not part of this talk. Um, but the thing is, this starts to withdraw, allows the etheric and, uh, you know, it's like Robocop, right? You just plug in <laughs> and the consciousness is somewhere else. You know, so the body is recharging. The chakras are still working because they have consciousness of their own. They have the physical permanency program. Everything is happening. But your consciousness is in the astral body and you can move around in the astral world, which is interpenetrating the physical world because it's subtler. So it's like astral matter interpenetrating the physical matter. So you can move around Las Vegas. You can go to the inner world. You can go to the ashram. You can go here. You can go there, wherever you feel like, wherever your desire takes you. And um, no issue with COVID. No issue with COVID. No issue with passport, visa. And contamination ticket. on that yeah. level. <laughs> and the thing is, it's just like, just picture it as you're still there in the physical body, but you're mostly in the astral body. It's like, have you ever worked on a browser like Google Chrome or uh, Safari, whatever your favorite one is? Sometimes you're working and then you think of something. So you open a new tab and you start to um, work on that. Yeah. And then you open a third tab or you open a second. So you open a second tab, you're working on that. You are on the second tab predominantly, but you are also there in the first tab, <laughs> right? So you're... You're, 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 you're there in the browser, but you're mostly, sometimes you open a third tab, so you can be simultaneously a little bit mostly there, 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 but mostly in one browser. And our, okay? and our son can do like seven. <laughs> I can do. Depends on what I'm searching. If I'm searching for a recipe, it'll be 12. Yeah, that's or true. Or food. Yeah, if it's food, there's more than that with, with reference to at least Amit's uh, iPad or laptop. All right, so let's move on. Um, you completed that? Yeah, I, I guess okay. so. Okay. So let's just move on to one more small part and then we can close for today. So here we're moving to a part where they say if there is any injury, right? And injury for me based on Master Chua's teaching would be a tear or a hole. Yes. So if there is a tear or a hole on the shield, it can be disastrous. Yes. It can cause serious problems to that person. So such injury may occur. Now, how do they explain this injury, uh, this problem? They say it can happen. Oh, don't go all the way there. That's your complaint. We're talking about the drug addiction and all that, right? Uh, let me see where I could start. So they say this could happen through emotional shock or a strong emotion of an evil character. And then they say, uh, which produces an explosive effect in the astral body. And then that effect, yes, uh, rend uh, rending apart, the, it literally tears the web, the delicate web, and drives the man mad. A terrible fight may do this or an outburst of anger. So you and I know that, uh, for example, the energy of anger or the thought form of anger is not a very nice color, first of all, but the shape is literally uh, spiky, right? It's very pointy like and lightning. sharp. Yes. And so if you remember the old comics, I think there are still comics. Uh, so if you look at, you know, their, their representation, when two people are angry, for example, they will show like a, you know, a bolt of lightning to represent, you know, there, there is anger. Um, and so that is very similar to even the actual thought form of anger. And so when you do get angry, you first of all collect that energy, which is not a very pleasant color with this, this, this sharp edges. And then when you actually get angry and you blurt it out, it goes out of your system like an explosion, obviously tearing your web and, and also the aura gets affected and then goes towards the other people. Like, you know, you're chucking daggers at everyone tuck, 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 all over. So whoever is in, in, in your way gets, <laughs> gets this energy that comes towards them and can affect them. 
Now, uh, if someone is just crazy sh shouting and screaming on the road, and even if you're walking by, you don't get that affected because you're not emotionally involved. But if you are emotionally involved with that person and they get really mad at you, then it can literally uh, cut you, right? And you feel like a knife is going through your heart. And that's the energy of anger. So we're not really talking about the person towards whom you're directing anger. We're talking about you when you get anger, angry. That outburst literally is like an explosion. It's like an, um, since we're talking about atom, it's like an atomic bomb that takes off within your chakra, breaking that shield. Because remember the astral energy, this emotion we're talking about anger is from the astral level. We don't get it on the etheric level. And so this energy, when it comes through and it's so angry, Right, that energy that comes is going to break through that. You know, it's like a balloon that gets this big, huge hole and comes out. And now, at that point, if there are, remember, we we're talking about astral entities. If there are astral entities that enjoy this kind of energy of uh, anger, they will come in. The door is open, it's wide open, they will get in, and then you become even more crazier. It can, even de it, it, it can even go to the extent of becoming very violent. Not just that you're angry, but when these entities start to enter, they will want you to become more and more angry because they need that angry energy to survive. And so in order to survive, they're going to get you to do more crazy and crazy, crazier stuff. And so you wonder how this person who was you know, calm, just got angry once in a way, suddenly has become literally a crazy person. It's purely because of this. Now, another reason that this could happen is also pure shock out of certain experiences. And uh, it could be because of something that happened in their life. Uh, say suddenly the, the loved one passes away and they did not expect it. They did not, they're not ready for it. And so that shock by itself will also affect the uh, astral and of course the energy coming through the astral and so people can go to the level of getting depressed not talking to anybody you have no idea what's happening they don't care about their physical they don't care about the energy they don't care about anything they just lost right and so um this this is a situation that does occur and the last thing that i'd like to mention before i end is that uh, even when you are, it says here, sitting for development as spiritualists call the process may also injure the web and throw open the doors, which are supposed to be naturally closed. Uh, now, my understanding of this is when the Kundalini, for example, gets awakened, not in the right manner and goes up, it's going to go up. Yeah. Remember we said it's, it goes through the center, through the spine. Now, remember the spine, which uh, Amit showed you in the earlier picture is where from where all these chakras come out, you know, like, like, a, uh, like a bell flower, right? Coming like that and opening up. And so if this energy goes out and remember, it does not have any restriction, it just goes everywhere. And it's going to go through all these chakras and break through all the webs, causing even more disruption. If you're in India, you know, you have that fountain uh, on that fataka, you have that firecracker. <laughs> Flower pot, I call it. And if it's really dirty, then it's like the rope one, which will fly in all directions. <laughs> anyway, so... Uh, hey, that's called a chakram. Chakram, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> the flow chakram. All right, so, uh, so we're looking at now what can uh, uh, damage it. You have to keep in mind, by the way, before we end, share the screen. You have to keep in mind... Um, that Master Choa, here they're talking about any injury uh, is a serious disaster. But Master Choa was one of the first ones who not only went up to the injury of the chakra, but also how to repair them. Okay. Because knowing this information is good, but once I read this, I'm like, oh my God, I already got angry yesterday. What am I going to do? <laughs> right? So it will uh, create um, a little bit of confusion, right? So, Correct. And it may not be just yesterday. Some people, it might be more frequent. Yeah, I got, I got irritated uh, 10 years ago. 10 years ago, so lucky you. Um, so here it talks about uh, when a person harbors negative thoughts or feelings or has a negative habits, the protective bed become crapped, uh, cracked or punctured <laughs> after a long uh, period of time. After a long period of time. So don't worry if you got angry today or yesterday, right? Now what happens? Since the person is filled with negative thoughts and he attracts, okay, this is the mechanism, uh, one part of the mechanism uh, that Sumi was talking about. You have, remember I told you it's like a fisherman's net. I really don't know if it looks like that. Yeah, that was how it, it was perceived for me, right? So it's woven, you know, like a basket. You know, those, you know, like those, um, 
like when those wicker baskets that they make, right? Uh, it's tightly woven. Uh, <clears throat> so this energy usually goes out, but if it is sharp, the edges are jagged like a knife. So as it goes out, it cuts. Are you okay? And sometimes it vibrates, so it tears, okay? And there are holes, okay? So if that is repeated over and over and over again, if it happens once or twice, it is all right. The body will heal it. But if it happens over and over and over again, what happens is, number one, the body doesn't have enough time to heal it. So in the meantime, there's a concept in the inner world or in spirituality called like attracts like. So this anger elementals uh, in the inner world, this anger energy or negative energy is food for them. All right, is food for them. So just like if you've done psychotherapy, you know that smoking energy is uh, when you smoke, it attracts smoking elementals because it's fire from the fire. These are not, these were called demons in the Old Testament. I don't want to get into old, talking about what they were and all that, but it's just, they're not bad. They're just like creatures in the inner world. You know, you leave sugar on the floor, ants will come. They're not evil ants. They're ants. <laughs> they're attracted to the or sugar. Or cockroach. Or cockroach or whatever. So, you know, so they're pests. So, uh, so this one, uh, it attracts them. Now, in the process of going out, before it heals, these things will come in. Okay? That is one. But there are also other factors behind that. Okay? Um, so that is one factor. Um, what is it? Right. So since the person is filled with negative emotions, he has attracted, so it would make him do terrible things he would not normally do. So this also they talk about, right? Uh, because they were talking about those beings and all earlier. Now, these cracks or holes are caused by, oh, why is this? Okay, we'll just come back to it later. And then that's all I have to say. But I had more to say for this, but I think we have time. I'll talk about it in the next session. Let me write it down. Okay, so yeah, obviously the sitting for development is basically uh, Kundalini syndrome. Uh, that happens if, for example, uh, the Ming Ming gets overactivated and there's too much energy. Uh, we can talk about it in the next session if we have time, you know. It's like uh, the, the chakral condition is almost like a person who uh, has cocaine, for example. Uh, <laughs> that's why cocaine also gives you uh, holes and crack. We, we, maybe if we have time, we'll talk about it in the next session. Right, but you have to just be careful about that. Now, here they're calling it a delicate web. Um, so we'll have to see what that means later on, what they whether they explain it. So now we know a couple of things. It's filled with vital force, it has physical atoms, it's delicate. What does the word delicate mean? I'm not sure. So we'll we'll look at it, okay? And it has the astral life force. And it has no, it doesn't have astral life force, it allows astral life force to pass through. Ah, correct. All right. Um, I think that's it for now. Let me, you can look at the questions. Uh, Deepa, no one said it's, it's just called the atomic web. We don't know why, but it's not, we'll talk about this atomic matter later. Yeah. Next, towards it's, the end. It, it, it hasn't really clarified that. No so, one has said that yeah. uh, it's made of atomic. I don't know why they're calling it. They haven't really explained why. Maybe because that. it's very intricate, like atoms, you know. Tiny, you know. I think they're trying to talk about tiny. Or subtle. Or tiny particles. And in those days, the the tiniest particle they found physically was the atom. And so they're trying to say it's, it's tiny particles that are all kind of compressed together, uh, woven in, in that format or that style uh, to keep it strong. Yeah. Now, the other thing that uh, Masacho also mentions is when you have a web, right? Uh, it's loose. Yeah, it's, it's not really Little, little, little. It's there, the quote is there. Are you bringing it? Okay, fine. Amit will that's why I, after the, That's why I didn't talk about it. Okay, it will come back. So with reference to the Kundalini, we'll talk a little bit more about it if later. Kundalini is a weekend. We don't need to sleep. Your body still has uh, to, needs, to rest. needs to rest. Remember, the law of nature is the law of nature. Well, when you, uh, Raul, when you want to travel out of the physical form and the as into the astral form, uh, there are many outlets, there are many exit points. Yeah, so it really depends on what you've gone through during the day. And that's why they say, uh, for example, not to watch TV and go to sleep because, you know, your <laughs> the whole body, including the astral body, is excited about what you've been watching. And so that's the state at which you go to sleep. And it's recommended that you probably read something that is uh, better for you and or 
uh, even do maybe a short meditation, maybe uh, Lord's Prayer, for example, if you're, a, if you're a pranic healer, which will help you then open up the upper chakras before you go to sleep. So then the exit will be hopefully from the but upper chakras. I, I've watched TV very often before sleeping. So. Most. Most. Do an invocation before you sleep yeah, for the Arhatic Yogis. Yes. So it'll flush out. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Don't forget, <laughs> do the invocation and do the soul affirmation at least. Yeah. That'll barely take a minute and a half before you go to sleep, mm. no matter how sleepy you are. What about keeping the TV on and sleeping? <laughs> That's why we don't have a TV where we sleep. Okay, uh, the book is talking about prolonged intake of tea and coffee. We'll come to that in a little while uh, when we talk, talk about uh, the next uh, section. Deepa has gone to the next part. That's oh, right. yeah. ahead. Uh, I'm now very more sensitive towards loud voice, not able to handle it. It feels piercing in my solar. So, when I go, but, mm, okay. Well, uh, it's a, uh, it's a, um, it's a transition. It's a transitionary uh, issue. You're, that's why I said you guys need to really be careful before saying I want to be super sensitive. I want to be, you know, it goes all ways, you know. You can scan the dirty energy, but then you start to feel it. Uh, many times I used to get really annoyed because there are two types of expansion of consciousness. There's auric expansion of consciousness. There's crown expansion of consciousness. Uh, so sometimes when you, I won't go into the detail of it, but the auric expansion of consciousness, when you do, especially the meditation inner breath of the Arhatic Yogis, you have a peripheral, peripheral uh, idea of what's happening in your aura. So if somebody walks in front of you and all that, you can sense their energy and it's, it's really annoying, but too bad. You're the one who's trying to change, not them. So you have to deal with it, <laughs> right? So what can you do about that? You know, you have to love your family. You are trying to evolve uh, rapidly. They're, it's not their fault that, you know, they're not uh, doing that. So you have to, you have to handle it. Otherwise, it's selfishness, you know, you can't just um, tell them. But what you can do is you can clean your solar and maybe energize it with uh, green and uh, blue and violet or maybe just green and blue. And maybe even the forehead. If it's too much. And the forehead. Yeah. Right. So uh, the opening of the web at will is done by clairvoyance. We'll so talk about when, it yeah, session. we'll come to that. I won't talk just about to it. Answer it. Mention it. Yeah. And then uh, Kundalini doesn't develop the web as far as I know. You can do the Lord's Prayer every day, but don't start off with that straight away. If you're used to once a week, then increase it to twice a week, then increase it to thrice a week. So allow the body to get adjusted to it. You know, don't go suddenly all bang. You, you have to understand, there are certain things we cannot talk about. And we already explained that there are seven layers of Kundalini and seven sub layers. So you can connect each layer to each plane and all that. Obviously, when it, uh, and, the, uh, and the tendency of Kundalini is to activate and vivify, uh, according to the book. And according to Master Chua, so when it goes up, uh, obviously not only, maybe it will not, um, the word develop is very general, but of course it will change the composition of your chakra, including your web. How you perceive data and your ability of perception of data, how much information you can collect, the consciousness of the web, everything changes. Because once the force that programs that web changes, everything changes. You guys are asking complicated questions. You're going to get complicated answers. Okay. Oh, yeah. So so just to end, last question. Uh, Savita, you're saying I'm chanting and saying affirmation. Now, the chanting could be different things. Uh, the simplest one being Om to reduce the inner noise and then do the soul affirmation. And if you like, uh, just thank God for everything that you have. That's it. Yeah. So let's say a thank you now. Friday night. Lockdown. Nowhere to go. <laughs> All right. So we're going to be there with you next week. Yes, uh, but like to let you know the week after that, uh, we are taking a break, the two of us, uh, just for that one week because, you know, then our son's school starts and life just goes on. We're going on a holiday from the, uh, from the study room to the living room. Yeah, we won't be coming to <laughs> we'll this be, room. We'll be traveling. <laughs> We'll be traveling. traveling. <laughs> from from this, this plane to the lower plane. <laughs> So, but next week we're here with you, yeah? So, all the way to the 17th. So, let's close our eyes. <laughs> to the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, we thank you for your great, great blessings, your tremendous patience with us. To our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chirok, we Lord Maha Guruji Mele. To all the great teachers, great masters, especially of theosophy, of knowledge, wisdom, 
and light. To all the great beings of communication, the internet and our Wi-Fi connections, to our soul and divine self, we thank you all for your great, great blessings, for your tremendous light and love, for your tremendous patience with us, for the greater clarity and deeper understanding of these priceless teachings. We continue to ask you to help us absorb and assimilate all this knowledge and to use it to become better instruments to do your work. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. Atma Namaste. Thank you, everybody, for Atma being namaste, with us. Guys. Enjoy your weekend, and we will see yes, you on, <laughs> on Monday. Yes, Monday. Uh, Aditya and Banwati, thank you all the way from Kolkata. Thank you so much to everybody out there from uh, Delhi to Kolkata to uh, Punjab to Mumbai and all the way down to Bangalore and other places. Thanks. But just to give you an idea, by the way, um, you have to understand that the web is something that's just you know, Master Chua makes it very easy. If I was reading this without understanding <laughs> what a chakra web is, I don't know what I'd be, at, atomic, I'd be thinking in physics, some, you know, like maybe some sort of uh, ulterior dimension in time and space that we have to go to an atomic web, like an atomic veggie. I keep thinking about that. You know, when they lift it over your head, the underwear. Oh my God. Okay. Just a boy thing. I don't you understand stop the these things. live stream. You can hear everything. It's recorded, right? Yeah, it is. Wow. I thought you, you were going to talk You can beep it out. Okay, fine. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Enjoy your weekend. Bye. Bye. <laughs>